you want your one oh, state solution. Oh, don't answer that, do you? Three state solution. You want two state solutions. Yeah. Oh, on what borders? And you support on the last, don't you? 67 borders? Order. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Deputy President. Borders, Acting Deputy Canada President. Borders. Order. Mr. Acting, Acting Deputy President, all people have a right to a homeland. All people, including Jews, Kurds, Armenians and Palestinians. All people have a right to exist and receive the protections under international law and live in peace and security. The Palestinian people have ever since 1948 UN resolution to divide Palestine between Jews and Arabs the Palestinian people have been left to suffer the indignity and the trauma of people dispossessed. I'm not surprised there is no mention in this motion of the Palestinian people. The Palestinian land, the Palestinian suffering, the Palestinians in the diaspora, the Palestinian rights as people deprived of their land, persecuted, imprisoned, killed, traumatized and dehumanized. I wonder whether members considered the Palestinian people while on this mission. Whether the human rights of the people known as the Palestinians crossed their minds. I do hope this question did cross their minds and perhaps pondered a little about the other people's human rights being now dispossessed of their land, their dreams, their aspirations and their future as a people. Ever since 1948, the Israeli Zionist plan is to acquire territory to expand the borders of the Jewish colonial state. Zionist ideology demanded Point of that order! Point of order! Jeez, give me a break, shit. Point of order on relevance. Member is not speaking to the motion. And as the Deputy Chair of the Parliamentary Affairs of Israel, I disassociate myself from his remarks. Point of order. Uh, point of order. Um, the, order, order. The members will wait until I acknowledge the member before the point of order is taken. Um, the Honour, uh, Dr Phelps. Yes, to the point of order, this is a fairly broad ranging motion and while it's not directly absolutely relevant to the wording of it, I think it would be unfair if uh, the member were not allowed to continue um, to speak on this, considering the breadth of topics which have previously been discussed in relation to this motion. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other contributions at the point of order? No further contributions. Um, the Honourable Member can resume his speech. Thank I think it's, it is in latitude of the, uh, the general you. purpose of the motion. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Eighty per cent of the Palestinian territory has been seized by force after the UN allocated 56 per cent to a Jewish state. Christians and Muslims made up two-thirds of the population and Jews who owned only six per cent of the land now make up 85 per cent, now to have taken 85% of former Palestine. And, and 800,000 who were dispossessed, expelled of their land, now 5 million live in the diaspora. There was nothing fair or legitimate about the UN offer. It was carried out of, over the objections of the majority, uh, majority Arabs, but even this corruption of justice was not, was not enough to satisfy the craving for the, uh, to take over the people's land. Arab voices were ignored, not a single Arab was consulted on the plan. Now, five million Palestinians are scattered across the globe, and those still living in their homeland are living in two non-contiguous uh, territories, Gaza and, and the West Bank, making up less than 20% of the original land, original territory that uh, they had after 1967. I think it's more likely now, Mr. Acting Deputy President, that they now live on 14% of former Palestine. And if you see this plan, Mr. President, Acting President, you will see what Palestine was and what the Palestinians now own. Spots of, of territory, spots of land, spots of land that is uh, scattered, scattered all over Point in two order. contiguous Point lands, Mr. Point of order. Point of order at the Walt Sea Court. That's correct. I've Pops are out of order. The member would be well aware that the, the um, protocols of the House is that uh, members should not be using props to support their arguments. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Acting Deputy President. The Palestinian's right to return to a homeland uh, should be a, a, is a principal right to all peoples. It's a fundamental right that is the heart of the Palestinian struggle. This must be addressed and fairly resolved. In 2009, Mr. Mr. Acting Deputy President, the Israeli war on Gaza, I mean, uh, in all the speeches that you heard here uh, today, you did not hear 
anything about the Israeli, uh, Israeli assaults on Arab territories in 1956, in 1976, in 1982, in, in, 1990, in, in 2009, in, in 2009, in, 2000, in 2006, Mr. President. In 2009, Mr. President, the assault on Gaza, Gaza, as was described earlier today, Mr. President, and you know uh, Gaza, and I just showed you uh, in, in, this, uh, in this map, it's, it, it's, a, a, it's the world's largest uh, open-air prison camp of 1.5 million people in a, in a very small parcel of land in which, in which, they were, in which over 300, uh, 300 were children killed of the 1,000 residents killed, 5,000 were wounded, and, and the Israeli assault continues on, uh, continued on Gaza. Some 90,000 Gazans were forced to flee their homes, according to Al Mizan Human Rights Center. Residents of Gaza City and the north had no water, no electricity, no trap, uh, no, no, uh, all trapped, traumatized, and terrorized. There was nothing said in this uh, discussion uh, about uh, the rights of these Palestinians who were effectively murdered by this military machine. With a, with a, there was no hospitals. The Israeli military machine effectively erased government buildings, apartment buildings, mosques, and had struck UN schools, as well as the compound of the UN Relief and Works Agency, ambulances and hospitals, which can be seen as violations of, of international human, human law and also human, humanitarian law. The International Committee of the Red Cross accused Israel of breaches of humanitarian conventions for failing to bring assistance to wounded and starving civilians and preventing ambulances uh, access for four days. Beth Salem, Physicians for Human Rights and other Israeli human rights groups have described civilians being fired on in doorways by Israeli soldiers, attacks on ambulance crews, aid workers and schools being used as civilian refugees. Human Rights Watch accused Israel of using white phosphorus, Mr. Pre Acting Deputy President. It, they used white phosphorus munition over densely populated areas of Gazans in violation of international, human, uh, international law. The UN, the UN Human Rights, Mr. Acting, Mr. Acting Deputy President, the UN Human Rights Council has condemned the Israeli offensive for massive, and I quote, massive violations of human rights. Amnesty International says that the Israeli shelling of res residential areas is prima facie, and I quote, prima facie evidence of war crimes. The organization has also accused Israeli soldiers of using Palestinians as human shields. And I quote, it started, it's, it's standard practice for Israeli soldiers to go into a house, lock up the family in a room on the ground floor and use the rest of the house as a military base. This is a quote, Mr. President. Richard Falk, the UN Special Rapporteur on the Palestinian Territories and Professor Emeritus of International Law at Princeton University says, Israel is in breach of the UN Charter, the Geneva Conventions, international law and international humanitarian law. Falk says, and I quote, there were the political will, if there were the political will, there could be an ad hoc tribunal established to hear allegations of war crimes. This could be done by the General Assembly acting under Article 22 of the UN Charter, which gives them the authority to establish, uh, to establish subsidiary bodies. But they never did, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, <clears throat> a Human Rights Watch investigation that found that Israel had repeatedly and indiscriminately fired phosphorus over crowded areas of Gaza, of killing and injuring Point civilians. Of order. Point of order is on relevance. To remind the honorable member, the motion states that this House uh, will, I'm sorry, notes that the New South Wales Parliamentary Friends of Israel under the auspices of the New South Wales Jewish Board of Deputies hosted a delegation of the New South Wales parliamentarians on a study tour to Israel from January the 6th to January the 10th, 2013. The purpose of this study commission was to... So I'm just reminding the member of it. Mr. It was to relevance. Well, the relevance... Yeah. Order, order. I note... Um, uh, order, order. Order, order. That's rubbish, and you know that. Order. Um, I just want to rule on the point of order. The member is right. The, the people do have the paper uh, in front of them, the motion, or you do have access to the motion. I would remind that while we've been pretty generous in gen, uh, general terms about responding, 
uh, I would note that the member ne needs to stay in the purview of the motion, uh, not Thank a you, huge Deputy history Deputy on, on the Mr. other Deputy side Deputy of that. President, if ever uh, there was a group in need of protection from war crimes, crimes against humanity and ethnic cleansing, it is the Palestinians. And yet the Palestinians receive little outside help. Um, in 1982, Mr. President, Israel invaded, Leb Israel invaded Lebanon. I mean, and, and some of the speakers, Mr. President, I never objected to them. I let them speak like everybody else. They had the opportunity to speak. I would have the right, if I may, I've only got five minutes, four minutes to speak. I have the right to at least inject, at least inject a bit of balance in this, in this debate, Mr. President. I'm glad that I'm in this House to have this opportunity to say a few words, to inject a bit of balance, a bit of humanity in, in, in this debate. And Mr. 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 Acting Deputy President, I have the right. I've got four minutes to do that. Point of order, Matthew Mason Cox. Can you please retire? The, the member will retire to his seat um, while there's a point of order as per the protocols of the House. The Honourable Shoket, thank you. Uh, the Honourable Math, Math, Matthew Mason Cox on a point of order. Mr. President, I have listened with uh, tolerance to the member, and I, I would raise the point of order of relevance. This is a motion about a study mission to Israel, noting the facts in relation to that study mission. This member did not even go on the study mission. He's having an, uh, a, I, a I, rant I, here the experience. about his own personal go issues. On. The reality is this is about a study mission to Israel. Nothing more, nothing less. And I think that we've been more than tolerant in listening to some of the garbage that he's been talking about. The Honourable Point of Order, the Honourable Trevor Khan. Yep. Order. Once again, I do ask the members to stay to the uh, the terms of the the motion. But I will say that uh, Mr. David Shoebridge did have was given quite open opportunity to, to reply, and I'll give the same grace to the Honourable Shoket Musselman. The member may resume his speech. Thank you, Mr. President. M Mr. President, as I started, um, all people have a right uh, to a peaceful existence, and so do the Palestinian people. I want, I want this chamber to record that. I want this house to know that, that they have a right, as well as the Jewish people, to have a peaceful existence, to have a homeland. And Mr. President, here we have uh, discussions about uh, how uh, peaceful and democratic the Israeli uh, government is. I'm, I want to inject a bit of, uh, a bit of reminder, uh, Mr. President. In 1982, when Israel invaded Lebanon and occupied Lebanon for 18 years, they imprisoned people, Mr. Uh, Mr. President. People in southern Lebanon were tortured. I visited the, the camps. I visited the, uh, the, the prisons, and I saw it, Mr. President. I invite members here to go to these uh, uh, torture camps that the Israelis set up in southern Lebanon and see themselves. In, the, in 1982, they occupied it for 18 years. And I, 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 resent, I resent, Mr. President, members here accusing resistance uh, as terrorist groups. I salute the resistance, Mr. President. If, they, if the resistance in Lebanon did not force the Israeli occupation out of Lebanon, wow. if they did not force the Israeli occupation out of Lebanon, I would not have been able to go to my grandparents' home in southern Lebanon and visited my, and my grandparents' home and visited the land I was born in, Mr. President. I, I salute them for their resistance. It is the right of people, Mr. President. Imagine if we had, imagine if in 1941 and 1942, we condemned, we condemned resistance against the Nazi Germany. Imagine if we did that, Mr. President. Guns would be blazing at you for, for resisting, for, 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 not, for not resisting the, the, the Nazi Germans. In, in, in Lebanon, in Lebanon the, the, resistance, the resistance was able to force the Israelis out. And in, 19, and, and in 2006, uh, of the Israeli war, the Israel war on Lebanon, at, towards the end of it, they dumped three million cluster bombs. Three million cluster bombs in little oh, southern Lebanon. Three million, three million now buried in the ground. A child will walk on the ground, will blown up, will lose their limb. A, 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 an animal walking around will die. 
3 million cluster bombs that still exist and will exist for, for hundreds of years and people will continue to suffer. So, Mr Deputy President, I'd like to say in conclusion, I ask that we speak... Order. Uh, sorry, it's time. The Honourable Linda...